tomorrow morning, while it's still dark, a solitary car will drive through the gate to the factory. A lone figure will make his way to a back door, unlock it, and step inside. A light goes on, then another and another. Large machines are fired up. Temperature control equipment is engaged. Banks of machinery soon begin to hum. By the time 7 a.m. rolls around, this factory worker has the plant all powered up and ready for a new day's production. This is Night Sounds. Welcome, I'm Bill Pierce. That little account reminded me that as I stepped into my office and studios a few hours ago, it was all dark in here too. And I counted 27 steps of powering up each little switch, whether it was a light or a piece of equipment electronically, a tape recorder, a timer, 27 steps to bring the power forth so that we can communicate tonight. In fact, that sort of detonated me to entitle our program tonight, Powering Up. Only our approach will be from a spiritual vantage point. Exalting Christ, whose power blasted through the black realm of death and brought him out of the other side of resurrection. Great message tonight. I'm so glad you're here to share it with me. In fact, we're going to begin with music. The exaltation of Jesus Christ, our sole purpose in being on the air. This is my commission as a broadcaster, and I want you to share in it with me tonight. We're going to call on Roger Williams, the company of singers and musicians, to touch on one of the greatest songs about the Lord Jesus. Beautiful Savior, King of creation, the Son of God, the Savior of the world.
Nights program introduced by the music of Roger Williams, the chorus, and the orchestra in our program entitled Powering Up. Jesus it was who said, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. And yet tonight many are ignoring that power and actually talking against it, trying to stamp it out with our feeble strength against the God of creation. John Adams, a voice out of the past in government, said, We have no government capable of dealing with an irreligious people. In other words, do away with religion, and you do away with America. It's only through the religion of Christ that people can be free and be good at the same time. Yet we hear the sophisticated pundits of modern morality arguing that this is not a Christian nation. There was another group at another time who disagreed, and here's what they said. Quote, Our laws and our institutions must necessarily be based upon and embody the teachings of the Redeemer of mankind. It is impossible that it should be otherwise. And in this sense, and to this extent, our civilization and our institutions are emphatically Christian. This is a religious people. This is historically true. From the discovery of this continent to the present hour, there is a single voice making this affirmation. We find it everywhere, a clear recognition of the same truth. These and many other matters which might be noticed add a volume of unofficial declarations to the mass of organic utterances that this is a Christian nation. Looking around us tonight, we might wonder at that. But this paragraph was written by the Church of the Holy Trinity versus the United States in 1892. It was the conclusion of the Supreme Court of the United States can you imagine the Supreme Court with that kind of a final conclusion today? Nonetheless, the Spirit of God is among us to show us the way again, to bring us back. But how far we've fallen from this great judicial insight which I read. How blind we've become. John Quincy Adams said, The highest glory of the American Revolution was this. It connected in one indissoluble bond the principles of civil government with the principles of Christianity. And yet tonight too many people have little or no understanding of this absolutely fundamental principle. Religious liberties trampled not only in the courts but in the educational system, and even in some churches. We even wonder, and we hear television commentators and newspaper columnists wondering too, what has caused the dramatic rise in crime and evil in our country. And it seems that almost every group has a ready answer. Politicians say we need more policemen, more regulations, more laws. Sociologists, bureaucrats say we need to give the people better jobs, more money, newer homes, greater self-esteem. None of these has a clue really to what's wrong. The truth is that we have forgotten what patriots like Benjamin Franklin knew when he said, only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. As nations become corrupt and vicious, they have need of masters. D. James Kennedy said, Thanks to the assault on religious values, the nation has indeed become lawless, corrupt, and sinful. And short of some kind of divine intervention, only a stern master will be able to bring the lawless back into submission. Tonight's program with the title, Powering Up. 
a moment ago when we were mentioning coming into the studio and activating all of the equipment, turning on the lights and the fans and the clocks and the machinery here. As followers of Jesus Christ, we can experience a similar powering up. It should happen every morning. We are not prepared for a day of spiritual and personal productivity until we've spent time warming up. I know every morning that I go out and run, jogging. I begin with a regimen of exercises and stretches just to, to get into the mood physically and psychologically and emotionally. Especially in the winter time when, well, say the chill factor is somewhere around 30 to 35 degrees below zero, it's a real challenge to get out and run the hills against a formidable headwind. And I often ask myself, why am I doing this? There is a reason. It's conditioning. I'm the better for it, physically and emotionally. And some might say, well, you don't have to go to that extent. Why don't you get yourself a, a piece of equipment and stay out of the, the cold? I don't know, there's something about being outside, dealing with the wind and the hills, and, and I suppose certain kinds of equipment, exercise procedures, and these types of machines do help you, and I'm sure that there's progress made. As I think back of Jesus and the disciples, they walked everywhere. There wasn't any transportation. They just walked from point to point, and they ate from the fields, they ate from the sea. They were healthy people. And if anything happened, certainly Dr. Luke was on hand to see what the symptoms might be and to give a diagnosis and perhaps help them in some physical problems. But we need to be powered up. There are moments in the morning when I really don't particularly feel like ingesting anything spiritual. And out of habit, I do sit down and I try to program my day so that I'll have these moments to intake what God has to say about the day ahead. Some years ago I recall being at a Bible conference out in Michigan and somebody said from the platform, no Bible, no breakfast. <laughs> I thought to myself, well, if if I don't get some breakfast and get the blood sugar up, I'm not going to be able to understand much of the scriptures this morning. So I usually do precede any devotions with the powering up of the physical to get myself in gear. Some people can't make it without a cup of coffee to get them detonated. Nonetheless, as we think of preparing and powering up as followers of Christ, we really need to get into the Word of God. We need His power even more when we're going through periods of, of emptiness, depression, and testing. Feeling shut down, we cry out to God. Just as I was ready to come on the air tonight, something happened with my equipment. And for some reason, I could not discern what it was. I went through all of the procedures, the checklists, and all of the things that I do almost automatically to get this thing up and going and underway. And I went through all of these procedures over and over again, and I could not get a signal to record today. A few moments later, I went out and talked to one of our younger members of the staff, and she came in and she spotted something that I had totally overlooked. The fact that the tape, the recording tape on my master recorder was flipped. And she asked, very unoffensively, isn't this supposed to be turned around? That doesn't look right. And I said, oh, no, you're right. That would make all the difference. 
And as she walked out the door, I said, thanks. And she said, well, maybe sometimes we need another pair of eyes to help us see. And I said, well, that's for sure. But you know, I went into a period of self-incrimination after that, thinking, how could I be so stupid? Here somebody comes in and tells the guy who's supposed to know what he's doing, this little thing over here made all the difference. Getting myself into a real blue funk, the thin shell of self-esteem and self-confidence I had just sort of fell apart. And before I knew it, I got into a, a period of, of a mild depression and began to complain about my lack of qualification to come on the air. And that led to a feeling of, what's the use? If I had my way, I'd walk out of these doors and never come back again. Who needs this kind of pressure? We had followed a whole week of real pressure cooker type uh, living in here and dealing with problems uh, that beset probably most people in a normal day's routine. But when they come all at once or in a sequence, sometimes they're a little harder to deal with. And before we know it, we can get into a spiritual tailspin. Well, this thing built up so that I thought, boy, here I am coming into a program called Powering Up, and I feel about as powerless as a little kitten. And I thought, well, I'm going to go over and sit on the floor till I get this thing together. And you know, just that little problem that I had a moment ago was enough to, to get me into this momentum of spiritual depression. So I had to pray my way out of that. And I thought, anything that makes me feel this way, to this extent and intensity, has got to be the power of the enemy. So I actually had to pray my way back into this chair to turn on the equipment and come on the air tonight. We're fighting a common enemy who's out to do us in any way he can, sometimes through these mountainous experiences that hit us head on, other times an attack from the flank, and then again maybe something as small and insignificant as a little pebble in the shoe or the flip of a tape that, that just drives us over the edge. We need God's power even more when we go through these periods. Isaiah declared that the Lord gives power to the weak and increases strength, Isaiah 40 verse 4. 29. So tonight you and I need the strength of the Lord, not only for severe trials, but for everyday living. To cope with these little troublesome things, some of which may come on us like a giant boulder when really they're just little pebbles. We need the consistency of the Spirit of God to keep us moving. And He has promised it. When we turn to God, we can truly mount up with wings like eagles. Verse 31 of Isaiah 40. So, maybe you need powering up right now. I sure did before I came on the air tonight. And I thank Him for helping me to do this. To go another mile. And He'll do the same for you. You know, this isn't my program, The Night Sounds Ministries, even though I guess somebody has to have his name on the door or on checks and official statements, tax forms and such. But we are a body of believers. Each one needs the other. St. Paul told us about it. A fit building for the Lord Jesus. I don't know whether you're in bondage tonight, spiritually, emotionally, even physically. But God is still here. His power has never abated. I don't know what your bondage may be, but right now I'd like to call on Cynthia Clausen. As she sings an old song that I think bears repeating. It's done in a mild country flavor, but let's just... Pray with her 
these old but powerful words once again. Out of my bondage sorrow and night Jesus I come Jesus I come Freedom, gladness, and light. Jesus, I come to thee out of my sin. And that is the place to come to. Jesus, I come to thee out of my bondage, sorrow, and night. Cynthia Clausen singing tonight, and for those of you who may have just joined us in the past few moments, I welcome you to the program Night Sounds. If you would like to write for it a catalog that gives an overview of everything that we've been privileged to produce in adjacent ministries, our mailing is Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. were marching round Jericho The priests were playing trumpets It was quite a show Joshua was telling everyone what to do He said, don't say a word Till I give you a cue When he said shout They let out a powerful shout And the walls fell down And they had no doubt There's power Power shout Dennis DeHaan wrote these beautiful words. Though weak and helpless in life's fray, God's mighty power shall be my stay. Without, within, he gives to me the strength to gain his victory.
And if any of you feel you lack power, and many do at the end of this day after a long period of work and the various exigencies of the past 24 hours, we need God's power to keep going, to take us through the impossible. We pray for you and trust that you will also pray for us, upholding one another in the power of the Lord, powering up through His Spirit. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I, I really appreciate your presence there. And I'm so glad we got together tonight. I almost didn't do this program because I didn't feel in shape spiritually or emotionally, but we sort of powered our way through, I guess, with the Lord's strength. And Thank you for sharing the moments. Until we meet again, may His power and dynamic carry you through tonight and into tomorrow. And until we meet again, a peaceful good night to all of you.